I've here formulated a question that uh, involves drawing isomers and naming them. And so the question is, draw and name all the possible isomers of C6H12. Show how the index of hydrogen deficiency predicts which isomers can be drawn. So to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency, we need to compare the molecule that we're analyzing, which is C6H12, to the parent alkane with the same number of carbon atoms, which in this case is C6H14. So the difference in the number of hydrogen atoms is 2. Uh, dividing the hydrogen deficiency by 2 will give us the index of hydrogen deficiency, which signifies the uh, unsaturation of the molecule. An index of hydrogen deficiency of 1 means the molecule either has one ring or one double bond. Since we have to draw molecules that contain six carbons, the best way of doing this is to use bond line notation where the hydrogen atoms are not drawn. They're assumed to be there. So, for example, if we draw a cyclohexane in bond line notation, each one of the um, elbows has two hydrogens on it. So this is C6H12, although we're only showing the carbon atoms. We're only representing the carbon atoms, but the hydrogen atoms are assumed to be there. So that way we can only concern ourselves with making sure there are six carbon atoms in each one of the molecules that we draw. We also have to remember that all the molecules we draw have to fulfill the condition of either having a ring or a double bond. So I've begun by drawing the largest six carbon ring and that's cyclohexane uh, and that exhausts all the possibilities for six carbons that have a ring in them so the next step down is to draw a five carbon ring which leaves one free carbon atom so that's methyl cyclopentane uh, now if we were to reposition that methyl group somewhere else on the molecule we would still have methyl cyclopentane so we've exhausted all the possibilities that include uh, a five member ring. So now we're going to move down to cyclobutanes. So uh, that leaves two carbon atoms free. Therefore, we can draw ethyl cyclobutane. Then we can draw one one dimethyl cyclobutane and one two dimethyl cyclobutane. That exhausts, um, no, sorry. Um, the next possibility is 1,3-dimethyl cyclobutane, and that now exhausts all the possibilities for cyclobutane. So now we go down to the next smallest ring, which is a cyclopropane, which leaves three more carbon atoms free. Uh, so the first example is propyl cyclopropane, followed by isopropyl cyclopropane, 1-ethyl, one 1-methyl one cyclopropane, 1-ethyl, 2-methyl cyclopropane. Notice how we uh, move the uh, methyl group from the first position to the second position. Now, if I was to put it in the third position, you might be tempted to call it 1-ethyl, 3-methyl, but in fact, that's still 1-ethyl, 2-methyl. All, all you have to do is flip it over to ascertain that, in fact, it is the same molecule. That brings us down to cyclopropanes with three methyl groups. The first possibility is 1, 1, 2 trimethyl cyclopropane. And then we can redistribute all the methyl groups all around the molecules. So we get 1, 1, 1 trimethyl cyclopropane. And that uses up all the possibilities for ringed isomers. So now we're looking at isomers with a double bond. The simplest one is hexene, followed by cis 2 hexene. I've abbreviated cis here by putting C. Another way of naming um, molecules that, are, that have the cis designation is to call them Z2-hexene. That is the, um, the IUPAC nomenclature. Um, Z stands for Zusammen in German, which means uh, together. So when the groups are on the same side of the double bond, the traditional way has been to call them, to refer to them as cis. And now the new IUPAC nomenclature calls for them to be named Z. I think the old system still uh, is used and is still current, so it's good to know about both of them. 
And then there's the trans variant of the same molecule, trans 2 hexene, also known as E2 hexene. The E stands for end gagging, which means apart. Then we move the double bond one step over, we get cis 3 hexene and its uh, other isomer, trans 3 hexene, or alternatively named Z3 hexene and E3 hexene. Now we move down to a pentene. We've used up all the hexene possibilities. So our 18th isomer is 2-methylpentene. Then we move the group to the third position, so it's 3-methylpentene, and lastly 4-methylpentene. Then we move the double bond on the pentene molecule, and we get 2-methyl-2-pentene, and cis-3-methyl-2-pentene, as well as trans-3-methyl-2-pentene. I've just noticed that this should be E for the alternative naming. Uh, the 24th isomer is cis 4 methyl 2 pentene. And then we also have trans 4 methyl 2 pentene, 2 ethyl butene. There's no cis trans for this one because if you were to switch the positions of the ethyl groups, it would still look identical and therefore indistinguishable. So you cannot have any cis trans isomerism where there are undistinguishable groups on the molecule. The 27th isomer is 2,3-dimethylbutene. The 28th is 2,3-dimethyl-2-butene. Notice how we've now moved to the four-chain um, four carbon atoms. Uh, Four carbon atom chain, sorry. And finally, the 29th isomer is 3 3 dimethyl butene. If there are any other additional isomers you can think of, please let me know on the website. Thank you.